Welcome special education teachers. My name is Amanda and I'm the blogger and tpt -er behind the Primary Gal. I service students from kindergarten to third grade um, with an array of disabilities from specific learning disability and cognitive disabilities to autism and other health impairment. And I spend a lot of my day working on reading skills, but I do have students who have math needs as well. Um, even though a big part of my day is not focused on reading, I do have some 20 minute blocks of time where we work on some math skills. So in this video, I'll show you how I structure that. And then maybe you can change or adapt that to fit your block of time. But please know that I really can see progress in my students, even in only 20 minutes per day. So every day we begin with computation and in my math series, on the left hand side of every page, we have eight math problems and they could be addition or subtraction with regrouping or without kind of depending on the time of year. So early in the year I start and we may not make it through all eight problems because we are slowly and explicitly talking about each and every step of the problem. Over the year though, we work towards independence and I might say, I want you to try numbers one and two on your own or work to build some of that independence. But a lot of times at the beginning of the year, I might only make it through three or four problems and that's it. But when the 10 minute mark is up, we stop and we move on. Usually I have Siri set a timer or it's just automatically scheduled as an alarm on my Apple Watch. So I know when 10 minutes is up and we move on. After that, we work on our prize box problem. So I really found that my students with disabilities are used to being spoon fed or they're used to failing. So they feel like they can't try or they feel like why bother? This is going to be too hard for me. So I found that they needed a little bit of motivation early in the school year. I do not always start with a prize box problem or I adapt it just a little bit to fit uh, the beginning of the year expectations. So with this, let's say we have worked for 10 minutes and we only made it to number four. Number five becomes our prize box problem. So when the alarm on my phone for one o'clock or for 125, depending on which group it is, when that alarm goes off, we stop what we're doing and we work on our prize box problem. So number five would have been the prize box problem. And if they get it right all on their own without any help, they can get in the prize box. Now, early in the year, asking them to get it correct all on their own really is not a, a typical thing that we would do. And it really doesn't kind of meet beginning of year. We're just learning to do this expectation. So sometimes it might be, I want you to try the problem on your own. Or I want you to use your hundreds chart and if I see those little fingers moving on your hundreds chart, you just might get in the prize box or whatever. Usually then we only spend a couple of minutes. Either you know it or you don't, and then we move on. Um, but I found that this was really, really successful just to get my kids trying and, and seeing like, oh, I did that on my own and I got it correct. Um, for some of our kids, they just need a little more motivation than others to make that happen. After the two minutes is up, we move on to the other side of our page. And here we're working on just critical math skills. So I found it really hard before I was using the series to balance all of the things that I knew they needed. I knew they needed computation and oftentimes that's what their math goal was. But then there were other life skills, other important things that I felt they should know or could know with a little help and support. So we spent about five minutes working our way through this page. Again, sometimes we didn't get here. Sometimes we might only make it through the chart and telling time. Or maybe one day on Monday, we make it through telling time. So I skip that on Tuesday because I know we're running short on time. But once we get in a groove, five minutes and we can tell time and we can count money and we can look at our graph. So it just kind of gives us a few minutes to dedicate towards some of those other skills 
that are important. And like reading a graph, I think my students miss this a lot just because they've never been explicitly taught. This is such an easy skill, we assume they're going to know how to do it, but we never teach it. So, or if we did, they were learning it at a very young age when they weren't really ready to start reading a graph. But when we're working on more complex computation, they are developmentally ready for some easier skills like reading a graph. I saw my numbers on NWEA really soar once we started reading graphs in our small groups. And my only thought behind it is they were finally taught at a time that they were ready to read a graph. Um, finding who had the most, who had the least, questions like that they can totally answer but we have to teach them. We end every group with a timed math fact test. Now, after the computation you just saw with three-digit addition or even two-digit addition, to go back to math facts might seem a little silly or a little bit behind. But for some of my students, just solving math facts quickly is a challenge for them. So what we work to do is just build our speed using a hundred chart, putting my finger on three, hopping up three more, and seeing that that's six. We also work on, hey, let's do all the ones with plus one or plus zero or plus 10 because those are easy. But they're not easy if I don't know what I'm doing. So it just gives us a time to really focus on, hey guys, let's do all the plus ones because nine plus one is just like counting nine, 10. And we slowly, slowly start to focus on some of those skills that a lot of us think are easy, but without practicing it or being explicitly taught, it is not easy for our students. So we just spend a few minutes on that. It's a one minute time test and we do take a couple of minutes to look at what our goal was before. Usually I do grade them. Like let's say for example, someone's goal was to get 10 math facts. If they only answer nine, I'll check it, but not right at that minute. I set it aside and I check it later. If somebody's goal is 10 and they were able to answer 10 or 11 or 12 or more problems, then I do go ahead and check their work. That way, if they have it right, they can get in the prize box. So again, it's just a way to practice fluency. A lot of our general education teachers are giving timed math fact tests. And what I was finding was my kids didn't know what to do and the time and the pressure was too much. So for my second graders this past year, for example, they took it every Friday. If we were doing it every single day in our small group, when they took it on Friday, it wasn't as stressful and as overwhelming because they knew what to do. It also helped them to know if I just have a hundreds chart, I can do this. Or if I just use my number line on my name tag, I can do this. It gave them a little bit of confidence. So for me, it was worth it to spend about three minutes a day to help build their confidence. Let me know if you have any questions about my daily math routine. I will be happy to answer them.